Let's all go to the movies. Hopefully they don't see me. Let's all go to the movies. Hopefully they don't see me. Hey! Welcome back, guys. Ladies, everybody. Dogs, cats, chickens, birds. Um, whatever you, you know, want to call yourself. This is... This is the boys in the hood. Um, was good. <clears throat> Who hasn't seen this movie? If you haven't, you need to check it out. This is a five. This is. I'm just gonna tell you straight up. This is a five star movie right here. Damn. The footage, is, man. I'm sorry. It's the, it's the top of my foot. Just the, you know, the palm of your foot. I think the mosquito got me. Uh. Boys in the Hood, man. I just watched it recently with my... He was 14 at the time. Now he's 15 with my son. And uh, if you have a teenage son, you gotta watch this movie with him. Um, it's great. It's great, man. It's, uh, it's just a great father-son film. A great hood flick. Um, just a lot of, you know... Uh, we try to watch a little bit of South Central. It was like it was too cliche. Um, you know, we didn't watch Men's Society, but um, we just watched the free movies. You know, which, whichever we which we could find for free. But uh, yeah, so Boys in the Hood. You know, it just in my life the synchronicity was in, impeccable, indescribable because I was. The same thing that uh, Lawrence Fishburne's character was going through with Cuba Gooding Jr.'s uh, character, uh, I was kind of going through with my son, you know what I mean? Um, so it, it hit on another level. That's what it was, it made me nothing by the end. It's like, whew, it made you cry. It made me cry. But I'm also 34. I think I think once you hit your after your 30, you start making movies, start making you cry and shit. All right, so here's just the Wikipedia, a little information, a little background. Uh, but here's some people who were in it. So the movie came out in 91. Uh, it was directed and written by John Singleton, who also made Baby Boy, which I'll talk about later, maybe next week. Um, it starred Cuba Gooding Jr., a young Cuba Gooding Jr. He did a great job. Ice Cube did a great job. Morris Chestnut, I don't know who that is, but every character did a great job, so they probably did a great job. Larry Fishburne, he did an incredible job. Um, it released July 2nd in LA, 91, and July 12th for the rest of the US. Because it took place in LA, so they, they that's pretty tight. It's only 112 minutes. Uh, it, it was, the budget was 6.5 million, box office 57.5. That was a successful, not only was it a great movie, it was a successful movie. Um, and that was just in North America, that, that amount they made. So let's see what they got to say. Boys in the Hood is a 91 American coming of age crime drama film written and directed by John Singleton in his feature debut, in his feature directorial debut. Uh, stars Cooper Gooding Jr., Ice Cube, Mia Long, Morris Chestnut, Tyra Farrell, Lawrence Fishburne, Regina King, and Angela Bassett. Boys in the Hood follows Trey Styles, uh, Gooding Jr., who was sent to live with his father, Fury Styles, which is Fishburne, in South Central Los Angeles, surrounded by the neighborhood's booming gang culture. The film's title is a reference to the 1987 Easy e rap song of the same name, Written by Ice Cube. If you ain't know, if you ain't know. Uh, Singleton initially developed the film as a requirement for his application to film school in 1986. He sold the script to Columbia Pictures upon graduation in 1990. During writing, he drew inspiration from his own life and from the lives of people he knew uh, and insisted he direct the project. Principal photography began in September of 1990. I was a year old. Yeah, I was a year old. Uh, it was filmed on location from October to November of 1990. The film featured breakout roles for Ice Cube, Cuba Gooding Jr., Chestnut, and Long. Mia Long. 
Boys in the Hood was screened in the Uncertain Regard section at the 1991 Cannes Film Festival. It premiered in LA, like I said earlier, in July 2nd, 91. Theatrically released in the U.S. 10 days later, the film became a critical and commercial hit, grossing 57.5 mil in North America and earning nominations for Best Director and Best Original Screenplay at the 64th Academy Awards. Singleton became the youngest person and the first African American to be nominated for Best Director. Or Melanated Individual, depending on how you know. That's Wikipedia's words right there, the African American part. In 2002, the United States Library of Congress deemed it culturally, historically, or aesthetically significant and selected it for preservation in the National Film Registry. Heck yeah. Yeah, so he's 10. He goes to live with his uh, dad. It's, uh, this is a plot. In 1984, he's 10. Trey goes to live with his, lives with his single mom uh, in Inglewood. Uh, he gets in a fight. His teacher calls her. Says that he's he's smart. And she, I'm not gonna say the whole plot, but she sends him to live with his dad, who lives in South Central. Um, he reunites with like kids that he used to kick it with when he would go just on the weekends with Doughboy, which is Ice Cube, and uh, Ricky, and Chris. Um, Yeah, I'm not going to say all the plot, but there's situations where he has to, like, hold it down, you know, as a man and growing up in South Central, he has to have a gun. But he's also an educated man. I'm talking about the dad, Lawrence Fishburne's character. Um, he works hard. Uh, he tries to educate people around him. Um, and so, you know, he plays an incredible character uh, that's not often shown on screen. You know what I mean? <clears throat> so, yeah, and it's dope because his girl, uh, Cuba's girl, doesn't want to hook up because she wants to wait till marriage. They end up hooking up anyway, but it's like, um, it's mutual and it seems like love and stuff. It's pretty cool. I mean, it, 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 it makes sense the way it is. Um, so Ricky, Ricky's home. Wow, oh, who's Ricky? Oh, Ricky must be Morris Chestnut. Um, yeah, that must be Ricky. So yeah, bro, when y'all need to watch it if you haven't. If you have, poor Ricky. Um. It's interesting how back then they used to, at the end of the movies, they'll put like, it, it's called, they call it an epilogue. Whenever they'll be like, Ricky was buried the next day. They don't have like lines. Dull boy was murdered two weeks later. Sorry, spoilers. Um, and Trey later goes to college with Brandy in Atlanta. So, man, I, I teared up right there because, uh, <clears throat> man, that was, it's just a good movie, good film. So apparently, Cuba was 17. Um, Ice Cube was 18. Morris was 17. Uh, Nia Long was 17. Everybody was young. Whoever played Little Chris was 17. Yeah, man. Somebody play somebody named Dookie. Um, so like we said earlier, Singleton wrote the film on his own life and people he knew based on his own life. Um, during writing, Singleton was influenced by the 1986 film Stand By Me, which inspired both an early scene where four young boys take a trip to see a dead body and the closing fade out of main character Doughboy. Upon completion, he was protective of his script, insisting that he be the one to project to to direct the project. Uh, later, he explained the retrospective screen of the film. I wasn't going to have somebody from Idaho or Encino direct this movie. He sold the script to Columbia Pictures in 1990, who greenlit the film immediately out of interest in making a film similar 
to the comedy drama film Do the Right Thing, which came out in 89. Shout out to 1989. Uh, shout out to the year, because that's when I was born. Doughboy was specifically written for Ice Cube, who Singleton met while working as an intern at the Arsenio Call Show. Oh, that's cool. He noted that the studio was unaware of Ice Cube standing as a member of rap group NWA. Uh, he claims Gooden and Chestnut were cast because they were the first ones who showed up to auditions. Whoa. <clears throat> While Fishburne was cast after Singleton met him on the set of Pee Wee's Playhouse, where Singleton worked as a production assistant and security guard. Badass. Um, Long grew up in the area the film depicts and has said it was important as a young actor to me that this feels real because I knew it was like going home from school. I knew what it was like going home from school and hear gunshots at night. Uh, Bassett referred to Singleton as her little brother on set. I've been in LA for about three years and I was trying, trying to do films, she said. We talked, I auditioned, and he gave me a shot. I've been waiting, I've been waiting to work with him ever since. The film was shot in sequence, with Singleton later noting that as the film goes on, the camera work is better as Singleton was finding his foothold as a director. He has a cameo on the film, appearing as a mailman handing over mail to Brenda as Doughboy and Ricky are having a scuffle in the front yard. Reception and legacy. Critical response. Review aggregation website. Aggregation. Uh, gives the film an approval rating of 96 based on 69 reviews, blah, 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 with a score of 8.4. It's a 10 out of 10, guys. That's what it is. <clears throat> All right, five stars, man. It's great. There's funny parts. Uh, there's heartwarming parts. They make you cry. They can make you cry. You're a crier in movies. That good movies, not corny shit. Um, but it's also like got a whole gangster vibe to it because you know who didn't like gangster films growing up. I know I did, and a lot of people I was around and. You know, my son does, coincidentally. But, uh, and I love him, so it's kind of it's cool to watch the movies with him now. He's old enough, you know. And from, like, Blood and Blood Out, I'm going to have to review that one because we watched that one. That was a badass movie. Three hours, but it was badass. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we'll see you next time at the movies. Let's go home from the movies. Hopefully they don't sue me. Bam, bam, bam.